is a grant. I don't know the words. Oh, so that means uh, local plants and native, You're just making it so it doesn't, yeah, you know, gotcha. I guess that's right. Am I right? I yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you're escaping. It means just basically use the stuff. Do we have, um, I think it's Brad. You're yeah. sure, actually. Also, would rather be straight on this. Yeah. Um, I have to grab a. I can see myself. An agenda. Trying to sit right. Um, um let's uh, all in order. This is a regular meeting of the Environmental Commission of the Borough of Ferryhaven. In accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, public meetings may be held in person or by means of communication equipment to include streaming services and other online meeting platforms. This meeting is being held in person and through the Zoom meeting platform being broadcast from Borough Hall, 748 River Road, Ferryhaven, New Jersey. Public participation for this meeting on May 10, 2023 is available by call in phone number or through Zoom. Members of the public will be on mute until it is time for questions and comments, which will be announced. At that time, the public has the opportunity to question or comment by phone or through the Zoom by the raise your hand button and will be called upon appropriate time. I would like to add that there's a three minute time limit and then we get to you know, question and rebuttals and then they have another two minutes, which I just made that up. Um, <laughs> to respond. Uh, notice of this meeting was sent to the Asbury Park Press two or times in Star Ledger on January 26, 2023, posted on the borough website. The bulletin board in the municipal building and has committee continuously posted as required under the state, under the statute. With adequate notice having been given, the Environmental Commission Secretary is directed to include this statement in the minutes of this meeting. Please, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'm going to keep my hat off. Wait a minute. And the glare is not too bad from the lights off of my head. Well, you're not allowed to say anything you have not had. Uh, Leo, my want. brother, my brother had some chair. Yeah, he's, he, 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 they said he was wearing a wig. <laughs> All right, uh, roll call, please. Michael DiMichelli here. Kelly Flanagan here. Jesse Murray absent. Brian Olson absent. Mm -hmm. Gary Patterson here. Jonathan Peters here. Brian Rice here. Ralph Windrum absent. You have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, approval of the. Um, March 30 meeting minutes, please. Thank you. Any additions, corrections? Mm -hmm. Show approved. Aye. Aye. Um, moving right along. All right. So, um, Kelly and Michael, Green Team, which um, I hear that the, um, uh, from both, from multiple sources, that the uh, love, where you lived day was a huge success. You yeah. had great weather. We did. Um, so I, I I will take credit for that. Um, no. And uh, so go ahead and let's let's hear about it. Kelly, do you want? I guess Michael, I can... you go ahead. Um, take it away. It was it was awesome. I think we had over twenty five vendors. I don't know. I would say three hundred plus people. For sure. Okay. There were dogs, there were little kids, there were tons of people there. Um, it was a great source of community, great, lots of fun games for kids, lots of good information was shared. Every vendor was happy. Um, like even people from like MJ Gas were couldn't believe how many people and they said it was a schedule of people coming through. So we were really happy. I think we made a lot of great relationships and people wanted to come back next year. So awesome. um you know, but I will say that it is a lot of effort to put that on. Uh, it's all volunteers who put it on. And currently, we didn't have any budget for it. So all of the funding came out of volunteers' pockets. So I have a question. I know we have a budget, but it hasn't quite been approved. Is there any way to get any of that money? I know it's not the way we kind of do things with the city or the town, but... Is it possible to get some money for Love Where You Live Day um, eventually? Yes, 
and typically we have to put in a um, a request through Christy into the borough to have it approved. Yeah, I would um, make sure you put it in every year. So, but I would put it in every year if you have a um, itemized list from this year would give you a, a good starting point for next year. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't gotten the bills yet for the bill yet for the aprons, but I'll absorb that personally. So that'll be my donation and because aprons were awesome. I was not able to attend. I'm sorry, even though Kelly called me out on it in the middle of the day. <laughs> um, oh, I would just make sure you put it in the budget for next year. But yeah, so I, did, I would you did put it in the budget. They did we did. Budget. Budget, but the council had not the budget yet. Right. Yeah, but that's there's ongoing expenditures. Hold on, it's ongoing expenditures. So yeah. But we could be able to the police from yeah. January one to June fifteenth. So right. I don't see why it's any different. It, it is no different. We right. just need a number. <clears throat> so, but I'm saying for this year though, is there any way to get any money back for any of that? Well, what I would say is submit it to Christy and see, no but I don't think there's no reimbursement. Well, we didn't know that there was any way to get any money back because we were told that there was a budget. Well, what's in the budget? What's the budgetary item? The EC. There it's under the EC. As but then we could put a request in. Could we put a request it's too late because, well, I don't know. Well, it's the expenditure. We don't reimburse each one. So how much do you... So what was... Hold on. Let, let me just ask this question. At what was, do you have a round number of what it costs out of pocket? Yes. It was definitely about somewhere about 1500 I would say. Okay. You think higher? 1500 to $2,000? I mean, that uh, needs three quarters of our budget. I know. I'm not asking for all of it back, but there are pieces of it that... Like, for can... instance, obviously... Thank you, Brian. So those aprons, those aprons were a fantastic hit. They were great because people needed to know what was going on. They just came to a person with a green apron. It was just wonderful. Um, so thank you for taking care of that. But there also were the signs that we had. Um, there was also the Monmouth County um, van on the move that we have a PO for. We didn't, we haven't paid yet. So we have an outstanding purchase order for it. It's something like that that we can submit to yes. Nancy and get yes. that. And that was yes. like 300 and change that we can um all right so i would suggest get that to christy any po's that you have outstanding okay get to christy um and and we'll see it through um, and if they're a monmouth county rep they would be already approved probably right just because they're a monmouth county like an official county well they're probably approved as a vendor but That's they still I mean. have to yeah. approve it well, yeah but as a vendor they're approved okay, probably, probably. But I'm not it's sure. So not the fact is to be reimbursed. If you were looking to get paid for this stuff, you should have talked about it. Well, but right. But if there's an outstanding PO, we might be able to get that approved. Oh, if, if it's outstanding. Yeah, three hundred dollars. Yeah, at least we'll get outstanding PO. We're not asking for reimbursement. We have uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, you have it with the yeah, sure. So that takes care of some of it. Um, the other thing is to um, always, which we're allowed to do, we got clarification is find sponsors. For it, whether it's you know come to us at the very us me us the very business association, I think some businesses would be more than happy to help underwrite it, um, and that would because if we if we allocate two thousand dollars out of a what was it twenty three or twenty six hundred dollar budget, which is the EC's total budget, it burns it up in one event. How would the sponsorships work then? Um, it would go to the town for your use. As far as that's what I think, Christy, right? And we, we found out, I know we inquired and they said we could. And this could do a spot, same rice wealth management wanted to donate five hundred dollars. It would go to the town earmarked for yes. the event. Yeah. Well, towards I, I think we did a rider, one towards. for Christy, one for Green Tech. So if we get a sponsor, we could like the city could collect the money ultimately for on our behalf. Yes. I believe that's the way it works, yeah. and we'll clarify that. But yeah. so, and and that should be easy to go to Ferry and Business Association, which I can with you and mm -hmm. Kelly or whomever, and present it at our meeting, which is you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we talked about that for the um, the film night. If you're going to collect donations, I don't none were taken. By we it, so. we yeah we did we tried to collect donations, but we didn't get any much. You know. Um, Nothing substantial. We didn't get anything, actually, I don't think. All right. So, and we also should look at the list of vendors because if they're there, they should be willing to pitch in something. We can talk right? about that. 
I mean, it, it, it would make sense to me that if you have 25 vendors and say, you know, half of them are for profit or whatever the case may be, or they all have budgets and say, hey, you know, we'd like a donation of a hundred dollars, there's 2,500 bucks. Mm -hmm. So right. this this kind of comes up to another thing that um, is a little bit, it's um, similar to this. I don't know if you want me to switch gears a little bit, but you know, is there any way, do you know if the EC or green team can get onto the community appeal? Because if there was a way that people could actually donate directly to the community appeal, like I know with Shade Tree Commission or Fairhaven Natural Fields area, some yeah, of that could help fund because Another other green team events, including Love Where You Live Day, but in the past week or so, we had planting a pollinator garden with Knollwood in front of them. We planted container pollinator gardens with sickles. Um, a lot of this this was all donated by green team members and and people, you know, our volunteers. Um, but if there was a way to actually have some kind of, you know, ongoing money or some um, some some sort of fund through the community appeal that it would be put to good use in our community. I don't see the reason why not. Would be it. run by an independent 501c3. Have you asked them? I think you have to ask them. Yeah, you have yeah. to ask them directly. Ask them. So, so them if you, uh, Kelly, if you and I want to ask them directly, I'll find out, do we know who it is? That's um, the head it's of It's on the borough website. All right, so let's okay. look into that. And we can, we can, uh, we can I mean, uh, meet with them. And, and I don't see, I don't have a problem with that. I think it's a great idea. So okay. I 100% support it. Um, yes, for so for a team line item or environment. I would do it. Uh, I would have. It would have to be both, but I don't have a problem. We'll have to take it up to a vote to say, hey, any monies that are raised right. in the community appeal would be dedicated 100% to the green team. And how does that work? Is it sort of like the same as the POs? Is it through the city or through the town? No, the, no the community, it's direct. There are there and always that was part of the money? committee. And what happens is, for example, like Shea Tree, they collect money from I think November. You can make donations to August, mm -hmm. right? And then in the fall, I receive a check. Well, Shea Tree, Shea Tree, yeah, that's the Shea Tree Trust. Yeah, I'm like, so it would be follow up this way. Any of that money. Has to go through the same exact sort of right. That's right. what I figured. Yeah, yeah. So but I don't, the money is sitting with right. the right. sitting with this. But the mechanism, I wouldn't be worried about getting decayed on a on a PL that is approved by the board. No, the, the right. same mechanism. Right, right. The same mechanism. We just mirror that. Mm -hmm. So we already have it. That's no big deal. I right. Respect. So I would do that. So that's the thing. Let's work on that, Cal. Because yes, I agree. Because um, another thing with. The, um, just to fill you guys in too, so I did submit the ANJAC grant for the rain garden at McCarter. Um, and as I was doing that, you know, it's it's tricky, right? This has come up a lot of times too, but this is a $1,500 grant and the amount of hours you put into it and then the procedural and you get it back and forth. It's just for something very monetary little, you know, but if you had a community appeal, imagine we had $1,500 every year from a community appeal that we could donate to put another ring garden or pollinator garden in, in different locations yearly. Um, you know, it just seemed as I was doing it, is it really worth all this effort? Because we don't even know if we're getting it. Uh, not if we didn't have it on autopilot with the community appeal. Right. And so, um, but I did, I did get that. And there was some people from, you know, the I did get some help to look at it. We did put that in. We don't know if we've gotten it or received it yet. TBD from Ann Jack. But um, if you guys have saw any of the photos of McCarter Pond overflowing in the past, that last rainstorm, um, a rain garden slash pollinator garden there would it would only be helpful. So um, yeah, no doubt. So anyway, yes, uh, Brian, let's follow up with that. I believe it's Half Acre that, that runs it. So we could- yeah, um... I forgot, it's a done deal. Okay, there you okay. go. Okay. <laughs> I'll just, I'll text them today. Great, thank you. Welcome. Um, I think regarding green team, um, is there anything else from Love Where You Live Day, Michael, that you wanna put in? No, I just thank you, Robin and Bonnie, who are here, and all of the green team members. We have an amazing group. And again, they all put so much time and effort and money into it. And I think it really showed. 
to be just a wonderful community event. It was. It was a wonderful event. And uh, all of our volunteers too. So we had some awesome volunteers. Some of the kids were amazing who helped us out. So thank you yeah. to them too. Um, and so if you did miss it, there's a lot of social media. We have Bethany from um, mm -hmm. Erskine who is helping us out with social media, who put up a lot of great clips up there too. Um, it was just a great vibe. We had live music. Um, and I just got a lot of a lot of feedback from community members saying it was a great day overall. So um, thank you. Um, yeah, and oh. yeah. Kelly, one more thing. So we do have this cool mural that we painted that we want to see if maybe we could put up in uh, in the hall, by hall or Earl Hall or in somewhere else that's open to the public. Do you think that's something maybe we could get the borough to think about? Sure. Is it like that bottle cap one? It is, here? it's a little bit wider maybe. Five by five. It's, it's five, five by five. five. So that one was here and then that was where did it go? It oh, went to no wood. Oh, okay, cool. So yeah, it was could, like a rotating exhibit, right? Yeah. Well, we have another art piece for the rotating exhibit. So if we could kind of get five that. by five stuff. Yes. That is it's like painting. It's it's on a um tarp, a wooden frame. It's a wooden a frame, but it's like a canvas on a wooden frame. And it was very the cool. One we had this sleeve in the glass. And, yep. and I think that'll work again. It's it'll be far. I mean, like it's it's being held up. And it was John Bagnato, who was an amazing artist who came in. Robin organized it. He's like graffiti art. All the kids came and painted it. And he's painting graffiti over it to like something about Fairhaven. It'll be really cool. And I, I believe it's a Fairhaven dock that's that they painted. Oh, that's yeah. Really cool. And the Great. kids got really into it. So um also in terms of Green team, just want to thank you um, for fun the EC for funding. Uh, we had six members go to the S Sustainable Jersey um, Summit at Bell Works on Friday. Um, so they will be presenting um, at our next green team meeting, just some of the thought, what they learned, what the networking, but it was a wonderful day, nine to four, um, with a lot of workshops and uh, great stuff happening in the state. Um, so We'll look forward to sharing that with you at the next meeting as well. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that. Okay. I That's just texted app. I just texted the app a girl see what his answer is. Great. Uh, dear mitigation, Gary, do you have anything to add other than what I worked on? Uh, bring everybody up to speak. <laughs> yeah, if you you can bring up. All right. So um, we had an exchange of emails for, uh, with Jody Powers of the NJDEP, who's the um, head of the um, Deer Mitigation Program Development for the state. Uh, she's agreed to come with some of her team members um, to meet with us at five o'clock prior, a, a select few of us prior to the next scheduled EC meeting. Then she will um, will go walk the property. She's been here before, but it was a while ago. Um, so, um, we'll meet here, uh, well, upstairs probably with, uh, Teresa and some others, uh, from the town and walk the property and then she'll be here at our meeting afterwards, um, to talk to us and, and answer our questions that we have. Um, so she'll be on the agenda for next meeting. <clears throat> um, Third Street Trail Project. Uh, Ralph is in here. Sorry, um, can you, yes. regarding the um, deer meeting. Yes. Um, deer meeting. Just so everyone knows. The five o'clock walkthrough is, is going to be attended by you and my two others, so that forum is not. Correct. Right. It's just Gary and myself. FYI. Right. It's Gary and myself. Um, and the mayor has it tentatively on his calendar. I, I don't know if Tracy may have it on her calendar. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think it was a maybe from you. So the next EC meeting, what's the date? Is June fourteenth. My best call. friend's birthday. Is that a call or? A call? No, she's coming here to uh, Jody Powers. So if you confirmed. could, huh? I did confirm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yes, Tracy will be there. I just want to make a note about that. But that's right because I asked. And you said that Tracy does not is no, not included. No, we've had respect. Right. So um, and it'll probably be Teresa, hopefully Chief McGovern, who knows about it, 
um, and and whomever else from the from um, from the town. Okay. Um, so add that to your calendars, please. Third Street Trail. I got an update from Mark. Um, he dedicated the tree to, or the team did. Ralph. Um, he had texted me yesterday. What he wanted on the what I wanted on a sign. I, so, I don't know. Loving kisses from Barry. Um, no, he had something short and sweet on there. I thought it was. I didn't know that I needed to add something, but I thought that we would discuss it in the meeting this evening. But it was it was that what he sent me. Right. Yes. Yeah, so thank you. Um, yeah. So um, thank you for that. Um, I don't have any other updates from anybody else. Um, ERI, uh, Jesse's not here. Michael, do you have any? No, I'm big, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so John was not here in the last meeting, so we um, put you officially as the mapping expert to give you something to do on the EC. Thank you. Um, so I was going to actually, during your visit, say, <laughs> I actually sent something to you. I and no, I, and no worries. I mean, I just don't want to. We were more than, <laughs> more than happy. I have all the data already. So right. everybody just tells me what they need. Can, can I put it out there? Yeah. Um, this work <laughs> of the Environmental Commission um, would is going to tie into the work of the Sydney Farm Grants Committee. Obviously, there's a ton of money available right now around the conservation, stormwater management, and so on. And one of the things that would be really useful is a map that would show. Um, all of our various water, natural, there's tributaries that go like Fourth Creek got told yeah. it's all the way back to Lincoln. Yeah, no, I have. Yeah, we have, I have the New Jersey yeah. stream, so we can afford to make that up. So perfect. But the other thing is, I mean, again, if we all agree that we'd like to make it a, a couple of month project, um, as I said, we have. I have a super GPS. We can go out and locate all the inlets if we don't have a good fix of the inlets. Mm -hmm. On the inlets. Yeah. So I asked for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Whether or not we have, we have to see what we have. We should actually, by statute, which is should, we should exist. Yeah, yeah. them out, but um, I'll I have I'll not yet received it. So when I feel like you guys know, but the but the other piece is um, the open space around those bodies of water. Mm -hmm. um, okay. <clears throat> there is no map of that. Uh, yeah, I'll, I can make it. Yeah. I'll do it right now. Yeah, I mean. They had a fourth creek for all intents and purposes. <clears throat> work harder. Oh. Correct. And then this sunlit oh. chase yeah. up in there. I'll pull it up. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's another, and there's another um, stream that runs from Ferry to Field. I'll send it to you and then you Jury can disseminate it. Sure. Because I can't send it to Rain. Yeah. Third Street. That, that would be so good to know those. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is like a story, too. Yeah. Which all of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is good, I don't know how this is figured out because this is not my forte at all. But how do you how do they figure out like the like lower lowest points in Ferryman and stuff like that? <laughs> On the geo. Yeah, well, we have two different ways of doing it. I mean, there's an official topographic map, but yeah. now with lidar, you actually have measurements. Because I think that that I mean, for, as a from a personal <laughs> point, I'm pretty sure I'm maybe the lowest point in Ferryman, but yeah, you'll know. Um, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but so I, I think that would be helpful to know because I think that that's some of the problems we're having in Ferryman might be because of like lower point. I don't know. Yeah, the other thing is that the data should be about eight inch accurate up and down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's pretty close. That would yeah. be a pretty good idea. So within any catchment area, which might not be the lowest part of town, yes. you're in a catchment area, you're the lowest of that. Of that catchment area. Yeah, you're going to yeah. get it. Okay, here's trivia. What's the highest point on the East Coast? Atlantic. And, no, wait, and we're there by the highest. Where is it? Uh -huh. Because Dory Clay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Yeah. Is that They say East Point, but that's part of it. But yeah. Oh. I, I still have I have a hard time believing it. Being up in any East Coast as many times as you know, go to Maine and stuff like yeah. that. But yeah, I was it's... told that, like, at, when I lived in Greenwich, that the church there was like the highest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Each town, but yeah. the highest. No, it's uh, it's definitely. So, um, all right, thank you, John. The worst. Living shoreline to Normandy. Um, 
I don't really have any updates on that front. I know we sent the recommendation to the council. We did, um, and I requested that it be put on the council agenda so that we could have a deliberation window and a workshop. Um, at the time, I was told that was a good idea. I, I, obviously, the things came up, it's, you know, the way I would put it, um, and I will follow up. Okay. And in the meantime, um, one little, it's kind of housekeeping, but it's also the pipeline and the way things get done. So just to share with you guys, there is a, a prioritization matrix that it's trying to develop. Uh, it's in the works. And it's a good idea. It's not perfect. It's not a perfect tool. It's an idea. But um, where there was a subject of waterfront parks, the Normandy is separated from them. Um, and I've suggested that it be, we ought to be looking at these things holistically because they're all different. And mm -hmm. do we need six, seven um, actual points of access? Perhaps we do. I, you know, it seems like a good discussion. Do we or don't we? And what kind of access are they, you know? Right. So anyhow, um, rather than separating to one, they suggested that they all either all be together or that they all be separated within the matrix and stuff. Right. So can't be a mumble and jumble. Yeah, right. You're gonna separate one. It should be cotton away, yeah, right. whether it's all separate or all yeah, continuous. Exactly. Um, and I thought maybe because it's green acres, but that has no jerry. That's bearing the, because it's still ours. Correct. Um, though I agree that it should be <laughs> one or the other. Yeah. Um, I will um so what do you like me to do? Uh, ask again. Yes. Yes. Please. I will do that. Yep. Um Schweiger's pond, we haven't done anything with um other than again was uh right, we we did we send a uh yes yeah, um, we sent I'm trying to keep track of it all. Um we sent a um memo to council to put it on their radar. Um, so I don't know if there was any feedback again or it was. Um, I know that that memo was captured mm -hmm. and put on the agenda and here in the BPW, which is a reasonable place for it to go. So, so that, uh, however, those agendas are so long, we didn't get to it. Right. Um, but what I see as a positive thing is that the communication is um, not falling into a black hole. Yeah, that's the big thing. It is. We can't expect it to, you know, drop everything and oh, correct. You know, Rice has spoken from the EC. We got to talk about the font, right? right. <laughs> um, but at least it's on, which yes. was your suggestion and a very good one on their radar. Um, that it's it's part of the agenda with it, whether they get to it or not. It's, yeah, that's, and it'll stay on there. It'll stay there until it gets yeah. to it. Um, and it's not a, a big major. Thing that we have to discuss, you know, go through now, but because we have a, and I guess you'll give us an update on the other pond when we get to your report. Okay. Um, so thank you. Um, Rain Garden, have, have they had said, have they said anything um, to where they're moving on with? No, I mean, it's, it's more of a long range. Okay. Thing. I mean, we're keeping it on the agenda so we don't forget about it, but right. we, we did say it's. <clears throat> In 2024. Okay. You know, Sorry. Unfortunately, 2024 is coming up quick. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> great. All right. We're almost halfway through 23. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's say maybe, yeah. um, maybe about two months, but I think maybe you know, we'll have a little more to say about it. Good. Okay, great. Thank you. We'll just leave it on the agenda. Yeah. Navisink <clears throat> River. Um, boy, um, if Wildlife is any indication of the health of the river, which it is a good indication of. The river is very healthy, um, and uh, it's still staying. You know, clarity-wise, it's still staying clear. Um, I got an email from a um, from somebody from Coltsnack, and Coltsnack, if you remember, um, that they have always said, "Well, it's got nothing to do with us." Well, You've got some of the largest horse population in the country at any given one given time, um, and so it, you are some of the issue. So I did get an email from a um, concerned citizen who actually I'm looking for her title. She is a, she is an engineer, I think, in stormwater management, work, but she's a layup to work with us, um, and she's very concerned. 
So um, that was a huge, um, and I'm looking for email. Um, Should I just leave our commission or the notice? She is, she is, uh, so well, it, it's, it can be one and the same, right? So she's on the EC and she's going to be on our committee as well for the Navasing River Municipal okay. Committee. Yeah, so um, she's the Colts Neck Environmental <laughs> Committee. I don't think they're a commission. Um, I, I, I'm getting close. I get too many emails. Mm -hmm. But um, so she had reached out to me based on a conversation that she had with Swarna at um, Clean Ocean Action. Brooke Crossan, C-R-O-S-S-A-N. Um, she's the chair of the Colts Neck Green Team and a member of the uh, Colts Neck Environmental Commission. She's also an environmental engineer um, and she has a fair amount of experience over the years in modeling non-point and intermittent point sources, water quality and tidal water bodies and free flowing streams, which is exactly what we're doing in working with the state. Um, so I emailed her back and, and um, told her that I'd love to meet with her. Uh, so we will continue to, um, to work together. And it's great to have somebody, you know, all this takes people that care right at the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? We all have a passion that's maybe a little different, you know, land-based or water-based or whatever. And it's great to see somebody like this just come out of the, um, you know, come out of their committee and, and green team and reach out to me directly. So um, it was a win-win for us um, in continuing to clean up the river because there are a, a numerous problems way upstream. Um, so we're continuing to do our, our thing and, uh, you know, that's the report on the NASA. Just one point. I mean, on, on the issue of boundaries, I'll be circulating to the team. Uh, we have, I have the official stream in Southern Jersey and the NASA was up at Colston. Yeah. So, well, I mean, so any discussion, yeah, obviously, and, right. And, I mean, and it's a misnomer to call it a river because it's really, it's, it's tidal, but it is fed by, by, uh, swimming river. But Which north of that goes all the way up yeah. Colts Neck. Um, you know, that's kind of where the headwater is for the for the Navis. Yeah. Um, so but in the past they've always said, oh, so yeah, okay. It well, all gets into it. They have very nice fawns. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They do have yeah. nice fawns and they have a lot of horses. And, yeah. and they actually were named in a big lawsuit, yeah. um, you know, by um the clamors. So um that is where we stand with that. So that was, like I said, a, a great um, boost in, in, in having somebody who cares and with their background and especially in uh, water uh, waste receptacle. Can I um, ask something, Brian, about that? Scare me. Sorry. <laughs> You're being watched. She's someone else. That's um, good. Do you, do you mind? So I know um, there's been a lot of talk on the green team too. We, obviously we had um, people from the ALS there with their oyster demonstration at Love Where You Live Day, which was a great hit. You know, we've always talked about oysters and I know that New Jersey has that um, funny law that you can't have them for fear that people will get sick and ingested. Um, you know, it's just completely different from New York, right? Um, and so when I was, um, I saw New York, New Jersey Baykeeper a few weeks ago doing a clean ocean a action event with me mm -hmm. and I approached them and I said, you know, what can we do to try to get oysters back in the river, right? Because um, it's like a catch 22. You don't want them in there for fear people might eat them, but you need them in there to help clean up and purify the water. Um, he said that obviously there's a lot of, you know, people are, are writing about it, trying to get to the state, but there's also, he said that there could be something where you can do it in private residences that live along the river. Um, right. so, and I was just wondering, and then I spoke to the representative from ALS on Sunday and he's like, I, you just can't do it. I don't think it's allowed in the Navasink. He was able to do it other places, but my thing is, could it be something that you can have it from town to town? So like if Fairhaven says, yes, we allow for private residences to put some oysters on their dock, you know, like, could that be something that um, could could be allowed, could could happen? Do you know? So, um, yeah, so um, Bill Head North and I have been talking about it and um, 
I can say something, but I'd rather say it off the record <laughs> about it, and and I will. Um, but um, they they tried. There were some. There was some talk that there were a few oyster shells stuck to some um, moorings in at Mount Boat Club, so that prompted a big study from ALS to hang oyster shells from a whole bunch of docks. All right, to see if there was any spat and and such that would and it never it never materialized. Um, I don't think that there's any law that says we can't hang them from our docks. I will double check with Bill, but Bill has been pushing and there, I think there is some, there's some um, move, there's some motion, you know, there's some, it, it's got legs, all right? So um, to be able to see the river um, and, so, and, and get them back, because they were native. So, right. kind of the river. so um, in fact, Fairhaven Road is paved in oyster shells. If you dig up the, the pavement and it was called Pearl Street, um, the oysters to go back to Fourth Creek came up in oyster boats right to River Road up Fourth Creek. That's it was a navigable uh, waterway. Um, May I offer one? But the problem is in the 60s, people got sick and it, and it, and it killed the industry. Um, and that's why the state is so... Um, you know, it's so highly regulated or just 14 parts per million of fecal coliform that is allowed within the shellfish to be able to open it up for open harvest, all right? We're trying to get it back to restricted, which means that they still have to go to the depuration plant, which they have to at a rare to bay anyway, um, to at least get that status back. So we are working behind the scenes to introduce reintroduce oysters somehow. There were two beds that were that were seeded some years ago. Um, they were kept um, very quiet. I know where they were, where they were. I don't think there's any more oysters there in both of those areas. And they have to keep it quiet because they're worried about people poaching the oysters, right? It's not like a hard clam where it's no big deal to plant, right? But oysters have this different uh, level of seniority on the on the shellfish on the shellfish chart. Um, but they are doing it more to get bay. Um, they have oyster farms. I am looking into, um, and I can have it on the record, um, possibly having an oyster farm, whether that it's, you know, how, how it would work out, we'll see. Um, but the, the river does lend itself to oysters um, big time. This is one thing that Kelly has, um, as I, I think that a direct answer to your question about local municipalities and what could they do or allow? They, we don't have any jurisdiction correct. over the, the it, river. Yeah. So you couldn't do that. But um, I'm telling you, I know you already know everything about how it's, it, the law is to protect the, the commercial right. industry. Right. So right. It, right. It's, it's all comes down to commerce. So that's why the state has Bill Hedendorf um, and, and Bob um, Bob's team. Who we, you know, who I meet with, uh, you know, I talk to weekly, and, and we meet every but other you, month or so. No, and and I get that completely, but it this would be solely solely for the purpose of cleaning the river, right? And as reestablishing this, it wouldn't obviously, you know, pe no, that's what like you're not trying. To, and, and also for like buffering tidal, you know, I mean, there's a lot of benefits for oyster beds and huge, you know, huge, huge benefits. Um, the problem is 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 one person gets sick and then it really the onus comes back to the state because the state regulates it and it and it would really um really you know be detrimental to, to commerce um but i but i will get i will get a direct answer okay. from i want to get a direct answer from uh from the state to see if we can do it privately and then we can talk more about that and i'll take a ride to maryland and and get the seed oyster. I like the idea of a working oyster versus mm -hmm. um, a farmed food source. Correct. Well, at least the state doesn't uh, recognize two different um, oysters. Right. And I don't know how you market. Clearly, there's a lot of. Well, how you just because we call it farm raised, it's still wild, right? It's just that they're it's done in a controlled way in you know in open water. Um, it's not like it's in a in a pond somewhere. It would be working in in the river. 
um, the biggest the biggest threat to that is how do you guard it, right? I can't expect the state police to to stand guard um, unless we put it in front of Murphy's house when they're there anyway. Um, but but there there has been talk. The, the right way to do it is probably once they get to a certain size, then they get relayed to uh, NWS Earl, Navy Weapon Station Earl, um, because that's patrol to a point. Um, so that that has been the 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 hurdle that we're trying to overcome, but it's something that I've been trying to work on for for a while because they do filter fifty gallons of water per day. Yeah, and, you know. New York, you know, you, you have the Billion yeah. Oyster Project, you have, mm -hmm. I mean, you used to work partners with them until the NJDP said, you know, no, and it's just, it's unfortunate because there are so many more benefits and, you know, it's like a double-edged sword. If it's like, if you don't have them, well, then we're dealing with these, you know, poor quality, water quality, but if you do have them, then you can help it so that, and I understand, and it, but like, right, how do you differentiate between the work working oyster that's purely for cleanup and also for buffering coastal, you know, and, and mitigating coastal erosion and wave action, you know, compared yeah. to actually wanting to get profit off of it. Um, and so that's why with even starting with residential people who sign, you know, might agree to this and understand the purpose of having oysters in their waterfront properties um, for they that. Will. They will. And there's a group of people that, that the, um, ALS um, contacted and like I said, hung the bags to see if we could get, you know, some natural spat, um, but it didn't occur. So there are people that would probably be yeah. willing to say, sure, you can hang some, you know, sea, sea oysters and such, and, and let's see what happens. Um, the biggest thing is that people are gonna be tempted to go and eat them, which is fine if you cook them, there's no problem there. It's it's the raw oysters that, that would pose a problem. Um, I grew up in this, you know, in the seventies, and we ate them off the off our point. We still did have them in the seventies, mm -hmm. uh, wild oysters, and uh, we ate them raw. And I don't have any problems. Um, well, but, uh, keep us posted and let us know, you know, if there's any, anything that we could also do from a, you know, resident standpoint yeah. or green tea, you know, how to just kind of get our voices heard as well. I agree with the whole thing, so I will uh, have an update. Thank you. Well, now we can go to waste for something. So I've done a little research. I don't have much to report. Lower you live day kind of took a little bit of my energy the last few weeks, but next meeting. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman Cole, it's your turn. Um, I, I apologize to everyone for arriving late. Um, I don't know if I can call. It'll reflect in your time. <laughs> in my, my conversation. Your conversation. What, um, what did I miss? <laughs> you didn't miss anything. Um, well, we did. Um, no, because you were here. You started. You heard us from the green team. No. I heard the green team. But you were we there. So it was really a big deal. Um, deer mitigation okay. was when you walked in. So okay. we didn't, other than. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Um, let's see, um, I have a couple updates for you guys. Um, you're aware that we went to contract and awarded a bit prior to raking and that things have sort of seemed not according to plan. Um, and what I, what I can tell you is that it's an executive session and I can't report on it yet. You can probably make some assumptions about that on your own. Um, which what project is that? The Hydra Rake. Hydra Rake and oh, Okay. Are you able to? I'm not as familiar to what happened. What's that what didn't go really according to plan? Keep it updated. I can't. So you um, can't. Can I? I would like to. Can I? You can. I, I can. Am I bound by? You know, you know, because you weren't in the executive right. session. So, from my. It would be a personal observation. Right. From my personal observation. Which is what I was going to say. Thank you. Um, there's not much organic material coming out of the ball. Okay, that's coming. Yeah. Um, and I'll keep my opinions to myself. That's my personal that's observation. That's which is very so. Um, I don't think anyone should draw any conclusions. Right. We don't draw any conclusions. Right. It's an observation. Really, an observation. 
from you someone to make observations about the equipment. Mm -hmm. I can. You okay. Certainly can. All right. So my observation. Thank you. You can set. You can set me up. Um, so I, I'm being careful for once. Right. Um, Good. <laughs> it's against my my nature, yeah. as you all know. Um, so the equipment. There's been equipment coming in and out. Um, the um, excavator that you see there is a rented excavator. It's not owned by the company doing yeah. the project. The hydro rake itself, which is the stainless steel looking right. uh, apparatus that's floating um, is brand new. Mm -hmm. Looks to me anyway, my, my observation mm -hmm. is that it's brand new. Uh, so you can come with your own conclusions from my observation. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I have been there um, a couple times a week. I have not gone there. I have not stopped there during working hours for obvious reasons. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's not as, as soon as working. I'm allowed to open myself so, yeah. Who is yeah. who? This is like, does the company who owns it run it or our DPW? No, it's the company that won the bid. Okay. Right. It wasn't our DPW. It's a service. Right. It's a service. So the, the there's project. one of, it's one of the two that bid on the project okay. in the state. Got it. Um, in other matters, let's see. Um, the, the council has your memorandum on Pucker Parks and Batten. Um, Marine access ramp because boat ramp is so much easier to say, but also misleading because you can't really launch a boat from there. All um, right. Can I just interject real quick? Yes. We're going to call it a small craft launching area. I like it. I met with the mayor today there. Small craft. <laughs> there you go. Um, and uh, did you guys discuss this at all? No. All right. I was waiting for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, the last we spoke of it here at the Environmental Commission um, is three projects, or you're all familiar with it. It's the small crowd launch area, um, a pocket park at the end of Hands, and a pocket park at the end of Grange. Um, there was sort of a universal agreement around the pocket park at Hands is really having just missed the mark or the opportunity for, to make that something special. Um, it was immediately set aside the uh, with, with broad consensus um, would, would express clearly in, in your um, assessment as well, this body assessment. And then the boat ramp of your caution in your memo was received um, and ultimately um, at Monday night's meeting, bundled council kind of bundled the whole thing and looked at it so it should go out so that we can do it. And I think that that was based primarily on the, um, uh, the, the what's damaged there now makes it so unusual mm. that the investment to make, it's really a maintenance, um, it's a lot of money for maintenance, but nevertheless, it's really just simply bringing it back to be usable. And then at Grange, um, this is a lot more tricky. You have an outstanding maintenance issue there, failing well pen, which has a safety issue or associated with it. Of course, it's a 10 year safety issue. Um, the grant, um, a flawed design, and uh, a DEP permit, like a lot of variables in that. And there was a fair amount of deliberation. Um, Personally, I, I would have needed time to talk about it a little bit more to try to find a better outcome of what would be a good outcome for fair given long term. And um, it was decided that we should vote on whether or not to put it, to have callers write up the uh, bid specs, put it out for um, bid. For hands. For range. For the whole thing, for Grange. Just, just for Grange, 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 Grange and Batten. I mean, I think Baton is just, just a lot less loaded. Uh, there's no, there's, you know, other than there should be some more there. I think the other, the collateral issues are significant and deserve to be examined. So whether or not that breakwater is contributing to the closure at Point Creek, which logically you can see it is, and you know, all those other extenuating things. That there is sort of a scope of work there that 
you should probably look at a conditions assessment or sort of start to understand what's happening. But separate from that, because it really wasn't about like the, even though the two are related, is the fix up it uh, and then the uh, range. So that's what happened on Monday. Um, and yeah, that's what happened. And the majority voted to put it out to bid. Can I speak to what transpired today with the mayor? Well, sure. Okay. Um, I had consulted with Councilwoman Nicole, and of course, me being me, who couldn't stop my thumbs, shot a text to Josh, uh, Mr. Mayor, and uh, it, and uh, a little while later, he, he said, you know, I'll call you. Blah, blah, blah. So he sent me a text, or he called me, and, you know, um, knew that I was a little perturbed about uh, what transpired on Monday. Um, so he said, well, I said, I'll meet you there now. So I literally left my office in the middle of the training day, met him there. Um, what my suggestion is, and he wants a letter, but I wanted to, you know, bring it up um, to the commission that um, my suggestion at Baton Road to reclassify it as a small craft walking area, not a boat ramp. It's never going to be a boat ramp. Um, and to, because it's not safe now the way it is, and to cut, if you go above the high water mark, all right, and cut out all that pavement and concrete, dig it down and just fill it with, you know, stone. You can put a board on, you can put edging on one side and the bottom to hold that stone because I think the deed, he was worried that this stone would get washed in and out and so on and so forth. And then that would, that would make it usable. It would make it safer and it wouldn't cost a lot of money. We can do it in house. So that is, um, what my suggestion is from from my standpoint, whether the EC agrees with that, well, or has opinions on it. Yeah, I'm going to want to get in here because I was there when we got the initial grant, and I'm going to be honest with you. I think the borough has been remiss in not dealing with this. Hundred percent. And right. but it's been because council members have jumped the line. This is when you're not doing capital plan planning appropriately, whereas people wanted to do the tennis courts. And we spent a significant amount of money in the tennis courts and I objected at the time relating to the fact that we had this outstanding problem with two dimensions. On Grange, it's just a safety and a maintenance problem. When you're all done with that, you're going to spend a bunch of money and you're not going to have much more than what you currently have. It'll just be for the next 35 years. Well, I can speak to Grange. Too. Well, is that it, what is the situation, right? It's right. Just so located up there. so with, with Grange, it was our suggestion from the EC to just take care of the bulkhead. Yeah. And do what we had to do, which which um, is still my my position. Uh, it'll cost between three and four hundred thousand, which is in our report. It's actually the the you know right now the going rate in round numbers is three thousand dollars a foot. So yeah, I understand. Seventy five feet. There's your number. We ran it up to a hundred. There's three hundred thousand. Understood. And let me just um, say, and I, hold on, hold on. Let me just finish. Okay, please. Um, what came up was oh well, we got to go back. And it's the engineers. We got to go back there and repermit the whole thing. It's going to take another six, eight months. Right. That is not accurate. There is a mechanism called a Zane letter I got within it. the state of New Jersey. And that is to circumvent the process of getting permits, which we already have. But if you change the work, you right. have to repermit it. So a Zane letter, I thought I wasn't 100% sure if it just. No, it's how we did. It. It's how we did the dock. It's, and how it pertains to the yeah, but that, was, that was twenty five years. Ago. No, it was when I was on council when we read the dock. When I read when we it. built the very oh, dock, I saw it here. Hold on, let me you send me this memo. I'd like to see it, but let's just there, 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 no, I rebuilt the tender. All right, thank you for that. <laughs> okay, I did the work. It, 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 <laughs> I know that. All right, so anyway, we did it with right. Zane. Hold on, hold on. Right, so a Zane letter can. But we don't know if changes have been made since then and now. Oh. It hasn't been changed. The statutes are still there. I have it. I'm going to send it with a letter to to the mayor and council to our suggestion based on us saying just do the bulkhead yeah. and do it under his name letter. The engineers on this don't know what they're talking about because they said, "Oh, you got to repermit it." All right, you don't. 
You can do it on the same letter. I have oh, it all the, from I, our engineers who work for us at Rice Associates. Okay, one of the things is the grant money. Is this grant money still outstanding? Yeah. Okay, so one of the hold on. One of the reasons we had to do other improvements to the spaces was that to get the Mountain County money, the open space money that we got yeah. from the grant. I'm gonna, I was you had to have that, some improvements in amenities. To correct. Just structural. But here's, here's, what, here's where the numbers lie. And you're a numbers guy like me. You're going to spend $700,000. Okay, to get back 250, you're still net out of pocket 500. If I do the numbers right, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Now, if you do Baton Road, let's call that 100, <clears throat> and let's call Grange 400, you're spending 500,000 dollars, right? Right, and you have so is it makes you, and that's where the, that's where the mayor's coming back and saying, hey, Brian. We can have 250 to do that now. Maybe it makes sense from an economic standpoint, but but it was our recommendation, remember everybody, to not do greens because it's anti-environmental. It's all concrete hardscape. But so when you look when when you look at apples, you're talking apples, hands, you're talking hands or grains. Grains, grains. Where the hands is not on the table. It's grains, the plan was to have just like a concrete surface that goes out. Right. So last meeting we had, we all, not all, because I know you hadn't really read it. it was, um, I, I would like to see the memo. I think obviously I'd like to comment on it because I have a long history with this project. But the other side of the house is okay. But you're gonna, at the end of the day, we're going to have to spend a bunch of money to get the bulkhead up and the boat ramps a mess. And I'm going to say the quality of our waterfront facilities is significantly the, below some of the other. The quality of our, our facilities is significantly below. Not in all aspects. Yes. No, not in all aspects, Brian. Brian. I'm not going to debate it. No, you, you, well, you're going to say things like that, then I'm going to debate it because here's the deal. Go ahead. When I came on the town council, ready for this? That's the average fire truck was 1970. We're not in the fire truck. Wait, it's not the selling. The average fire truck today. We're not in the fire trucks today. You're telling me not finished this. Well, are you going to let me speak or are you just going to preach to us? Just tell us what you're going to do. I'm going to talk to things that are germane to the environment. I understand what you're, you're saying. And I'm saying this has been a deferred maintenance project. All of it for a very long period of time, which is why I said, all right, but you're saying don't spend 750 because we're not going to get anything more. The reality is we have to do this maintenance at some point. Can I ask? My, can no, I but hold on one second. Let me just, my, I said nothing. The, the economics are pretty much almost apples to apples. But we're going to end up with an anti-environmental structure that goes against what we're suggesting the town does. Again, to add more concrete and more impervious coverage on the banks of the Navasing River is, is against our mission. That's the top of Grange, right? That's just the amenities on top of Grange. So you're going to leave the top of Grange essentially. No, 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 no. It's a whole year. They came up. They, it's a whole concern, project. My concern is Big. one, and I there's a big one. So here are the concerns with this project is that these plans were made something seven years ago. So right. are they up to speed in stormwater management with the way things have changed? Are they even, I know that because we were talking about this grandfathered in, they probably don't have to be up to what the new standards are for yeah, stormwater okay. management. All you're doing is putting, you're putting grease on a skin exactly. for the water. It's exactly. 100%. That's the way you can look at it as an not, not from a non-environmental point of view. I don't know that this took into consideration the needs or want, desires of any of the Community in terms of what they're using the spaces for. Correct. But they so, want to use the space. What's that? Who? People. No, people want, don't even know that you people can use want the space. to use the you space. Know, the, the, how they, I use the space. Mm -hmm. I, that's why I do yoga on the grass. Right. But, but now you're not going to be concrete. I'm not doing it. That, that's not it's, a, it's, a natural space. It goes against it. It goes against the environment. I don't right. think. And, and we also I had a we had a Grange. member from Grange that was in our meeting last week that was asking us and to please and was delighted that we wanted to keep it as natural. So we did have uh, residents yeah. come get to our meeting last time. Here right. there, there is a mixture of things you can do. You can make it more inviting to everyone. It's not just people who live on Grange that yeah, but right. what would be why is that platform more inviting than a well, for one, more the organic at the beginning of it is is the NBA correct? That's the piece you're which making. will allow someone in a wheelchair to actually see a more uh, of an osprey nest or something, right? Well, we have that, that's why the, at least the top part is a concrete ramp at a certain slope with 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 the uh, with, you know the red thing with the right. the 
the, the dots, the warning right. surface for right. the visual. So in that respect, I can see why, you know, there's a landing and then there's like concrete stairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so there could be some kind of compromise where there's see the landing. a landing, and then from that point, it's not concrete, you know, but at least somebody could get the other reality access to, you know, I'm not, so my, I my totally for a, like anyone to have access to this. So I'm not, I, I agree that maybe there is some compromise, but with the way it's going forward, there's no there's compromise, no compromise. going forward. Yeah, as it is. Then again, I, I'm sort of harping this, but storm order management, it's, it's this last storm. I mean, I, I don't know that this would help me particularly, but all people like there's a major issue in Fairhaven with storm order management. I don't and it's not going to get better. It's every time. That's a long term yeah. decision. Yes. For, is this the right for Fairhaven? But I question that. You, I could, it doesn't even have to be long term. If we submitted these drawings mm -hmm. tomorrow, DEP would probably not approve that because yes. of the amount of concrete. Uh, I agree. Hundred percent. And given the new store, I agree. But on the, on, on the other level of this, this is important public access. Totally. Again, it's important to maintain and everybody comes to agree with that. The Hans Road situation, you can pick a lot of different ways to do it. But again, at the end of this, I think we should have good public access with a safe facility that people can enjoy yeah. the view. As long as it doesn't. As long as it doesn't so this further. Plan, it's one of the goals of the master plan. And when you have a goal of the master plan, the next step is community engagement to understand in what way will you express, what would the built environment look like to create access to the waterfront? And that's usually done through a series of meetings that include professionals and the community so that we can have these discussions before there's any drawings. I saw what happened, whatever. I was in the air. Jonathan, you probably, I don't even know if you were involved, but the point is those drawings got done. Now they're here. They've languished for certain reasons, certainly beyond my knowledge. Um, but it, and also in part because of the imperfections and local residents did have problems with them and some of them were quite valid. Uh, stuff I won't talk about, but the um, upshot is at this point, I don't know that it's economically sound. I don't know that it's the best decision long term for sure, just shoreline resiliency for mm -hmm. where even. Mm -hmm. I don't know that this is, I have some concerns about the public safety side of it because mm -hmm. it's such a steep slope that when, if you have a bunch of kids on bikes that went down and mm -hmm. fishing, when they're on that platform, they're below grade mm -hmm. uh, and they're boxed in because. There's walls on both sides, not walls, but there is enough vegetative privacy border for the purpose on the other side. You're, it's, it's, they're totally boxed in on both sides and in the back. And because there's no line of sight, it's as if there's, they're boxed in on. You're talking like range. Yeah. Just on range. the platform. Right. I don't know if you've had a chance to study the drawings. So, so, all right. Anyway, at this point, um, I think you guys understand the way I voted. But um, I I still um, I, I don't know what to say. You know, can something be done from like my question is is this now gone? And well, there's steps in the process. Um, you know, requesting bid documents, so the engineer will now prepare them and they'll come back to the governing body to you know. So it's not like this issue is gone. There'll still be talking points. That, you you know. Once a project reaches this stage of decision making, though, it's uh, I, I I don't know what's going to happen because this is fraught. But well, I don't it's know. Well, I'm, a, I'm on the other side of this, Tracy, because I've been very patient. I've been trying to get this improved for a long time. Brian, why should we give up a boat ramp? That's a significant thing. It's, it's not a boat ramp. It's always been. It's a boat never going to be a boat ramp again. Uh, no, see, that's what you're no, saying. No, I'm saying to you, what boat what, ramp today? Is okay, no, it's in the official New Jersey boat ramp. Guide. Yes, but can you launch a boat there? You see, you're you're, you're, you're twisting here. Let's no, 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 ask me. Exactly. Is it a boat ramp according to the state of New Jersey? Yes, it's it usable. Wait, no. There's a second point there. Why is it not usable? Because there's too much fill there. Okay. Because they built a, a breakwater on one side and filled it all in. I understand that. Who did that? You and I both understand. Okay, who did that? So will it we be got 1992. Okay. Right. They now get one side. Of it. And we said that they had to put okay. one on both sides. Two plans. So the question is, is that, it's it not a boat ramp. Yeah. So what? I don't understand. Because there's no water, and the DEP will only give us 
permit to dredge 300 cubic yards, which isn't enough to, to do anything. So what advantage do we get with this plan? In to zero. The there. Zero. I think that was what the environmental commission was trying to plan to the government in that moment. The, because the DEP did not allow us to extend the paved segment, which would be mm -hmm. known as the book ramp, so we can't go out as far as we would have. Right there. And we weren't allowed to put in a, a west side breakwater, which mm -hmm. would, you know, a boat would you want to protect that. Yeah, right. So those are the things that cause it to be redefined or we. You know, got them maybe a long time ago. It it, it functioned as a boat ramp, um, right? The DEP won't let us do the things that we need to, to make it a usable boat ramp. So you make it a small craft launch. Everybody has access to it. Delete the permit because you're not going to sell enough permits to to mean anything. They've sold five or something. I think I got the number, uh, and I don't know if they sold any this year. To so just make it an open public access that's safe. To launch small craft. Did I launch my 19 foot Darby there? Yeah, but I know a lot more than most and how I got it off the trail. So yeah, I get it that it's, there's a lot of things listed on maps and stuff. I, I you look at it, you're like, well, that, that's not cool. I can still list it on the map and I get it. I, I get from it. From a point of public access to the waterfront, that's fine. a very important part Make it of my. Beliefs about what we should be doing. Just we all want to give a flat cost. But if we give, listen, we've dropped lots of money on lots of things. And this it, is the deferred maintenance problem. Yeah, yeah. no, it but wasn't. It was a screw up in 1994 when they built the East Breakwater and didn't put one on the west side. But and lost. anybody knows tidal flow would tell you what was going to happen. I got that. But and we other, did. But the other part of it is it hasn't had much in the way of maintenance. It won't because you can't get a dredge permit. Years. You can't get a dredge permit to take enough fill out of there to mean anything. What you I, know how much 300 cubic yards of fill is? Understood. And my point to everybody, though, is that this is something you do not want to give up because you'll never we're, get it back. Nobody is saying that we're giving it up, Jonathan. What we're saying no. is that no. how can we come up with a happy solution to make it more usable and safer for the public? I'm also to saying... a plan that, like, is 2023. I okay. mean, I don't think that the plan matches the with what's the happening. You do, you do run into these administrative problems with New Jersey, which is they would like ADA compliance. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when we're building something, when we hadn't touched for 50 years, you get away with no ADA compliance. The minute you say you're showing up and doing a capital yeah. improvement, guess what? Oh, yeah, they're going to throw it out. No, all that hard surface, again, a big chunk of it is ADA. So I would have no problem having a less impactful I access think, point. But I, I don't think you should be giving up hands because hands is a valuable overlook as well. And it wouldn't take nearly as much money. And again, there's always a problem with the Taj Mahal. You know, people, when they come in here, they start saying, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. As Brian said, the Vulcan is an expensive element. We're not getting away from that. We recommend that. That is indeed. No, but that's a need. The taking hands out of the, right? The council has taken hands out of the project completely. Yes. We recommend it. Really? Yes. And you recommend it. Cold. You know, I left two years. It's not, but the, the thinking was, the plans were so... The plants so were so, well, so it, it, they miss the mark so much. The the thinking is, but uh, we even had a meeting with the county open space folks because we want we wanted to preserve the opportunity to do something with them and the grant money that they can give us. And they encouraged us. They said, "Look, do it right. Come back." They they now will require the community engagement piece and the grant amounts up to five hundred thousand. So it's twice as. So we would. I think Could be. look, there's no point in doing the wrong thing. No, that's the thing. Yeah. just to do something. Well, that's, 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 that's what I'm trying to convey to everybody. We take and, care of what we have, and you can take care of Baton Road to get back on the subject of the ramp to make it a small craft ramp because we can't make it any other thing and make it safe, usable. You don't have the parking there. You charge a, a ramp fee for hundred dollars, and you have a ramp. That they, they can launch boats at any tide up to 25 feet. You can't park more than three trucks and trailers on, on Baton Road. They're not going to park all the way up the road. There's not enough spans between the driveways. You don't have a parking lot. So you're never going to have a ramp like they have in Little Silver at Santel's. You're never going to have a ramp like they have at Rumson 
or ocean port or anything because you don't have the parking. It's a small access point, but you can make it nice and usable for sixty to one hundred thousand dollars. Do it ourselves. We don't have to hire any outside contractors. We have the equipment and ability to do it ourselves. Look, this is partially. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Uh, this is partially the state's difficulty because. 50 years ago, we would do this maintenance in-house, as you described, and it would be an ongoing thing, and we would keep the ramp open. I don't disagree with you. The state is, is ridiculous about, about the, the cost well, of well, and everything. The reality of this, though, is you have to just deal with these problems, and these are the current problems. But this, the, the people have this, a deep priority. 100%. Not because you don't have to it. How did what come about? The, well, when, when the, the signs of the bulkhead failing in range were evident, yes. How how did it turn into an open space ramp with a elaborate park design that includes all? Oh, oh, it's a really it's a okay. Let, there. let me just speak. I don't know where everybody lives in town, but the west side of town is surely devoid of public access to the riverfront. And those are the two points South that we had. The west, side. west side, your side, the west side. Yeah. There's not a lot of public access on this side. Oh, oh, okay. That's no, right. no, no. That's so, true. from the perspective of being on the west side, mm -hmm. I, I felt very strongly that it's important to keep public access to the river. Got you. So, okay. there, a, 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 let's just put it into perspective. The bolt ramp needed maintenance and repair. There's no question about that. I don't think anybody disputes that, right? Correct. It's not in good shape. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brain just falling into the river. Mm -hmm. And then it was, okay, how can we bundle this as a package to both improve amenities for the community? Because mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you, I was trying to enhance walk and bike access to the river mm -hmm. and view sheds and having the ability to have safe access for at hands to for kayaking removal. Yeah. If there's a storm. That's totally Wait. great. Wait. Yeah. Right. So that's the purpose of it. And we bundled it together and said, let's go and see if we can get the money from the open space program to at least defray some of it. It was well understood. I don't know where everybody's revisionist history. It was well understood that the projects were going to cost way more because of that bulkhead cost alone. That was the big nut in the game. But we were trying to sweeten the pot and get an amenity out of the deal mm -hmm. that were going to be something useful for the people. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, yeah. our west versus east, we do have a problem in this town in terms of public access. I'm on the east, I'm on the west side. You're on the west side too. And so these were two little pieces of amenity. We didn't have to do an acquisition because the property was already there. Good, good. Very nice. Yes. And I, I mean, at one of the council meetings, I argued for hands because I remember someone said don't like let's take that off the table even back at the lat of council meeting a couple of times ago and I said this is a hugely ex accessed area everyone walks that loop uh, not everyone but a lot of people walk that loop and we during COVID we were down there every single day so I for everything that you said my issue is that I feel like we're just pushing something forward that isn't doesn't doesn't align with anything that we need right I don't, now. I don't know. See, the word pushing to me would imply that it's moving fast. No, no, now. You feel like it's been so long, but the problem is it's now moving forward. Yeah. And it's not the plan that makes sense. But, or at least but, but let me give you an example. When we were doing the redoing the downtown redevelopment, we got eight hundred thousand dollars of federal money to do from Fairhaven Road to mm -hmm. uh to Hans, right? Um one of the things that the government federal government pushed you on is ADA. Mm -hmm. So everything we had to do had to be ADA compliant because even though Fairhaven Road, River Road was not even close to you know compliant, they wanted us to install a five foot passing lane for a wheelchair. That was the passing lane. No, because when you have an ADA sidewalk, they want to have a double wood sidewalk at certain yep. places, so if two wheelchairs are coming at each other. Yes. And I, I know, no, no, and I'm saying we're okay. going, we're trying to retrofit it and to get it. 98% compliant, where it was 20% yeah. compliant before the project. And this is what gets happened. So right. as soon as you say we're going to put a walkway in or a ramp, you're now building a new piece of capital infrastructure, and yeah. the state's going to look at you and say, why isn't it ADA? It's a good question. And that, I mean, that does answer some of my questions about why maybe there was so much hard paving. But I guess my next question then is, if, say, this project wasn't being pushed through as it is, what would have been the steps? Would they have had to get new? They'd have to get yeah. new plans, right? Mm -hmm. And that would take yeah, to a long time. Was that so, is that one of the hesitations for them? Why they pushed this forward? That was my question. Well, you have to ask the people that yeah, voted the way they voted. But um, they want access to the two bits. Understand where they're coming from, um, and if I understand where they're coming from, it is that they don't want to spend the money on new plans. That the um, 
they want to preserve the grant, mm -hmm. uh, which means that there has to be a connection between the uphill and the ball pen. Yeah. That's the specific. Um, and there's no way to do it if you don't get it. And there's no way to do it with, I mean, look, there are some softscape ways, right? You could use some different material. For the switchback, you're just going to end up with a lot of retaining system, which equates to more impervious surface. So, you know, are there softer materials that are more ecologically, you know, like yeah. environmentally friendly? Sure. Um, and for whatever small, listen, it's a construction detail, it's a few design changes, but it might get into more because that Gavian system right. is elaborate and it can it it has a function that's connected to the way that platform is built for in the in the bulkhead. So it's a bulkhead with a platform, the Gavion system, which looks pretty industrial. You've all seen them if you any kind of West Coast highways wherever you have dry grain change, mm -hmm. those are the sort of metal wrapped stones. Yeah. Well. So it's it's going to transform. You know, when you go to do yoga, you get to the, you know, you walk on the asphalt to get there, you get to that shady knoll, and yeah. you can you, you can hear the trees talking to you <laughs> and the water. It's really interesting. I know, so they're going to use all that. Yeah, it's all things the place, meaning the nature of the place, will now be transformed. Yeah, I, yeah but, but, I, but like Riverfront Park in Redmond. Yeah, but yeah. the flip side, or worse, you're in a wheelchair and you came for it right now, it doesn't offer you that much. No, it, that's a good point because yeah. you could have it, it should, um, it should have a, a curb cut with an yeah. access and a, and a concrete pad, which would obviously not impact, we wouldn't lose the nature of. The experience right. being there, but you could also go there. And we well, what the, could you have a pervious surface though? Could we go with the pervious pavement? Sure, yeah, that's this is what we tried to explore. Um, and we were working through it. Um, and you know, when you ask an engineer to ask DEP and they call up their guy who knows somebody, and and then it gets sent back in an email and it goes back and forth. And people, Okay, so that was the state of the deliberations within the committee. And, um, you know, to, to my, in my experience, it usually, those conversations are usually best when you have uh, the right people talking to the right people with the right intentions. The DEP is, it is, would be interested in de-intensifying what that plan looks like. The, so the DEP really have seen these plans. Years ago. Yes, yeah, seven years they're, ago. They're yeah. very different. It's 2015. We're trying to help to protect the river by replacing this bulkhead, right? Because if we no. don't do that, no. it helps no. the river. Well, the river doesn't care about the bulkhead. What's going to happen? It's worse. Yeah. It's worse. Actually, the bulkhead is, is anti river, but then, then we're, you're protecting our property from falling in. Right. Right. It's the other way. Well, well, at the end of the day, if you don't do something about this, you'll have catastrophic. But one has nothing to do with the other. If we re we can replace the bulkhead today under a Zane letter and not worry about all this infrastructure yeah. and be done, which is what yeah, and our you have to walk away from the grant and walk away from the grant. Not the end of the world because we're going to spend the same amount of money either way. That's not the end of the world for you, Brian, because you live on the other side of town. I don't. I, mean, I live on that side of town, and we don't have the way that I don't care. But they're not. But I don't care to a point where why should we? You, why should we? All right. So then you're going to express it. I'm not going to express it. You don't care. You don't care. No, I don't care from that standpoint that we're going to inch. That we're going to. That we're going to add further impact the river on a negative basis. So what? So somebody can look at it. And 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 feel good about looking at the river. Why why can't we work together and say let's build a structure there that serves both purposes? Why are we going to further put more impact on it on the river so that we can look at it and not and not get and not think and about not, it. Think that's my point. We're not going to get that. We're not going to get anything on hand out of this anyway. This year, this well, is separate. Only because we backed off on where we are. No, we had it in the program. Forward, no, as it's moving forward, as the council decided, it's yeah. moving forward without any hands plans. We can't say that we're sitting here as stewards of the environment, the river being the biggest draw of our town, and then build some structure that's going to negatively impact that. Okay, but on the other side. Um, sure. So when this was first conceived, which is 
noble and consistent with the yeah. discipline, which is all informed by the people. So you assume that it reflects the values of the community and have open up access to the river. When when you considered what access to the river at Grange meant, right. did you have something in mind? Was there a conversation about it? Do you recall? Mm -hmm. No, I remember you got to go back and think about the fact that you're focusing on the river. I'm focusing on walking, biking, destinations, place, right? Sure, because that's yeah. part of it, which is you're thinking about how is this place function? How do we make people more engaged with the environment, right? Without uh, harming it. Hold on. You're looking at this as a disamenity, and I see your stormwater management, but we're talking about a small area geographically. You know, to say not. the amount of sheet flow we have. It's right huge sheet flow. That's where all the water But why exactly? It, it, it all hands up on the end of the Hold on. There, there's a catch basin at the top of Grand. <laughs> you have a bunch of catch basin. What's happening on right. River Road? Which, River Road, wait a second, we talking about Grange? We talking about no, but we're talking about River Road that turns into Grange. So all of that water that is sitting, yeah. it's either coming to my driveway or it's going down those roads. So what if the river is flooding? But we're, we're talking the grade position. If we look at the grade from the top of Grange, that, that curb at the top of Grange where the bench is, mm -hmm. that's the only sheep flow we're talking about in the river that's going to be changed. How much water do you think enters that river on an inch and quarter of rain? I'm not talking about the whole area of the town. I'm talking about the, the well, we have to 75 down somewhere. I guess what I was wondering is well, we have to start to put it down. We can't increase the flow. Okay, now you're talking about it as that stormwater flow. I'm talking about it as a biking and walking destination, as a place for people to interact. There's a way to do it. So oh. Can I just ask him to finish his thought? Because I would like to know. So we had gone through all the effort of having a, a bike and walk, uh, sidewalk uh, completion program, mm -hmm. because part of the idea is to create a walkable community. Right. With a walkable community, one of the things you typically do, Tracy, you're into this, right? Would be you look for destinations, correct? And one yeah. of the things we identified were those locations. Why? They were on streets that were amenable to walking and biking. Yeah. They provided a destination view shed, which again, yeah. we didn't have to acquire the property. Right. Now, there are certain members of this commission who have been fighting this since day one, you understand. They're not here tonight, but they fought this from day one. Fought what? The Hans Road. And you well, we're not talking about Hans. I'm just telling you that I know. I know. It's yes, right. Not it's not that's a little secret. Yeah. So, so the point is that we were looking to create areas of review sheds, and these were available view sheds that we thought could be improved. Mm -hmm. with not so, a lot of land acquisition costs. That makes total sense to right. me that you that everything you just laid out makes total sense right. because Grange does offer a lovely view mm -hmm. shed. Right. Yeah. And and in it that it's passive, it's appropriate for yeah. I guess somehow it went from view shed to um, a park. What is drawn now? And it's two benches. No, it, no. it's a set of concrete stairs that goes down, and then you hit a, a Gavian system. For hands or for I'm great? Sorry, I'm only talking great. 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 Yeah, no, it's not great. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the design seems to depart. Okay. It's uncoupled. And okay. that's my and point. And that's all. I'll say that um, it's not accident. Okay. It was submitted in July. Of 2019, resubmitted January of 2020, revised per borough and NJDEP comments. So this is the revised plan as per borough and NJDEP These, comments, according to this. How, yes. one question, see the, see how the, much what I'm seeing about the stairs going down to the lower platform, yeah, yeah. and they gave it has been a French a trench drain yes. behind it, and then they gave you. How many people do we think visits that every year? Well, well, it doesn't look like a place that you should visit when you look at when you come up to it. Yeah, I mean, I know. That's 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 you want to hear your kids? Do you want to hear your kids? Because I did a town survey about 15 years ago. What was one of the most popular places at Fairhaven was the natural area, which we have absolutely no information about who uses it. But the fact was, when we surveyed residents, well, that's easy. That's I understand that. But the point is, when you say there's something like that, what you're saying is it's insignificant. Right? No. No. It well, that's what you said. It, it was correct. correct. Okay. No. What, what? What? What is in my mind as a follow-up to that? You can you can try to guess it, but you have a hard time because I don't know what it is. No, it, might, it was just a mere question. Right. How many people? And do we think that it would be more usable or more visited by building something like this? That. And, and I don't know the answer to that. Tra Tracy's here. Tracy knows about parks more than I do. <laughs> parks, there's different there's levels of lot, the there's passive parks. There's, there's a lot of ranges in, in the amount of physical infrastructure in a yeah. park. It can be everything from Fahrenheit and Fields, which has no very minimal physical infrastructure, right? It just has some trails. Yep. And then you have very, very, you know, tensed up 
public spaces like the tennis courts and the pat, you know, mm -hmm. that stuff that we have we have buildings in the park. So right. this is somewhere in between. It's not the most densely and most urbanized, if you will, component of our parks. We have a, we built a snack shed in the middle of right Fairhaven Fields. We we have I tell you, I did not want to buy the, build the parking lot. When we built the parking lot of Fairhaven Fields, I asked, is there anything else we can do for you? I wanted to do anything else than that parking lot, but the, the direct people wanted that parking lot. That's a heavy duty. This is not that park lot. And it's well, this it, is a lot less intensive than that park. But knowing it, that it's the, it's the location. That way now, then like I get that it's not the parking lot, but it's the location. Again, is does this make the most sense for Fairhaven now and moving forward? No. I it's, don't think it's it does. a half no. million dollars and it is a lot of for what? What is the return for the half a million dollars? You're not talking return because you're talking about a public amenity. There's no yeah, return. No, right. But is right. my question to, to follow up to that question, if I could get an answer, then will this increase the use of that park? It'll be a different use. Yes. Or it'll be a different use. But is that use worth, forget about the money, the environmental impact? No, that this is going to cause. Oh, we, we just, that answer, that, that's my. I, I only okay, get that's mine too, and that's person. we're not here to spend or not spend money. We're here for the intended sole purpose. What is the consequence to this? Because as you know, I don't want to hear unintended consequence in ten years when we find out that it's backfired. Yeah. Yeah, but the flip side. Sorry. No, the, the flip side of this is remember that we've done a lot of things that wouldn't quote have a positive return, but reflected on some sort of community values. You know, and so mm -hmm. the reality of this is that this is an amenity for the west side of town that doesn't have mentioned the way of amenities. I'll be honest with you, and it's an access point that's important. I think, mm -hmm. and you know, we're not doing anything that's really substantially going to improve this. You know, other types of. of Public access. No, there's right. no question that I'm 100% for more and usable public access. Yeah. The issue is, are we doing it responsibly, considering where the location is on the bank of the Madison River? That's it. I mean, well, other, I almost hear you guys all saying the same. We we when, you actually, when you conceived of this idea as a member of the governing body 10 years ago, I mm -hmm. think you. You sound like them. You want to create an access that was tied into a network of yeah. livability and mm -hmm. th th that would make the most of a, a, a sort of a, an essential asset that was already there, but make it part of an overall yes. idea. Nobody has said, and Jonathan, I didn't hear you say that we have to get people down there so they can touch the water and <laughs> right. right. So whoever drew the plans took it upon themselves to make this decision. Exactly. And because it answers the grant. The only thing is to plan later on the boroughs and the DDP's comments. The, 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 the original. The only thing so about. You keep, what you say, when you keep saying that. I'm saying that it says it. It's a revision box here, right? Yeah. Initial submission 2019. Which was a uh, decision. I don't think there's any water that was like, resubmitted right? in 2020 as yeah. per the boroughs and the DEP's comments. So yes. this version has taken into account the boroughs and the we never It never came across right now. It never had any community input. What, what there's there's no mean? community input, and it never the, came across. The EC well, never no saw it. it. The oh, EC yeah. would never saw it. We never I saw it. My point is that the DEP has already seen it. The DEP permitted it. They, they permitted it. And when, it's ready. And when the application was submitted, the DEP said, show us the receipts, make sure the environmental commission signed off, and make sure the planning board signed off on this, make sure your construction official has seen it. And we didn't sign off. So, okay. yeah, those notes are there. It does not reflect any feedback. There's no there's no there's no riverfront access you, at Brain. Were you here? Depends on who you are. It, the, the open space folks say, well, you showed us where to oh. put access. Yes. You showed us that it's a set of concrete steps down to the platform with a railway, and then that's where that's on hands. No, no rain. I don't see it on the plans yet. It's there. Yeah. Where and you have to work. There, there's two benches here. Yeah, but it's not that's to the bulkhead. This is the bulkhead. And you're not getting to the river. You're not getting what? No. That's what they're doing. 
That's what they're calling access. Guy oh, access it now, but their monkeys with waders on and fishing poles are going fish. That was for so they're going to get they use it as for access to make a monkey this and wade. The, the, the meat tied the meat is never beach. It's, it's right. always water. Correct. And it's always, you know, there's a, a lot of action here. Correct. This is the neighbors. Correct. Okay. So what were what were you saying? You were saying we were going to access to the river. We're not going to get to the water. No. It was going to be visually yeah. available. I say it's visually available from up here. Mama County Open Space said, well, you guys told us access is with the, what your drawings say, because we hired somebody who majored to do these drawings, and it was concrete stairs down at his right, yeah. and they is... And they basically said, hey, if you had told us that access was an open view shed over a grass mm -hmm. wall, you know, with an ADA compliant club, right. then that would have deepened. And that's the way it should have been done. So, okay. This is a discussion in terms of with May 30th. Yes. We hired an elementary, right? Yeah. Correct. Well, and that's my point. So, okay. yeah. can we just pause for one second? Let me just say, after all the time I spent sitting around, <laughs> we do have arguments sometimes about how much of the develop to have yeah. with our engineers and with our planners, say, in town, because some people want a lot of stuff and other people want less. And it's always interesting because. You know, like for instance, should we be? This is a good question for this commission. Should we be installing more catch basins as opposed to having natural street courses and and, and sheet flow? I, I, again, I'm I'm open to hearing questions, but I think when I want to the engineers like that. Of course they do. No, I'm just saying that this is one of those but things. But that's why I think we're that's why we're saying that right? the, the grassy knoll is okay. the, the, that's why we're saying that the grassy knoll. Is number one more aesthetically pleasing? Yeah. Number two, nicer to do yoga and sit on. Yeah. And number three is a buffer for the sheet flow coming off the road. But I'm going to be clear that and it's you're going to, I'm going to calculate it, Brian, because the sheet flow is only from the curb line down to the river. Because there's a curb. The curb, the yeah. curb is there, yeah. and there's a catch basin no, here. Yeah. So that surface is only about a 75 by 100 okay. foot area of sheet flow. But that is a minor contributor to the sheet flow. Of the river. If you concrete it, it's going to be hold on. You, you, you put it in well, then are you putting stuff like that is getting onto where the grass yes. should have been yes. on the cement, and then that's how you come up with a permeable solution. There now. You know, you're for the permeable solution, but the reality of New Jersey is the permeable solutions, they are very odd. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't count gravel as a permeable solution. No, it's not. Because all right, well, that's, there you go. So that's why the land, the reason grant, you know, alone. Yeah, I, it's yeah. natural buffer. It's a really and scary. build around it. I, I I just want to put it on the record. I am absolutely for moving forward with a project to all the things you said, mm -hmm. give better access, but also stormwater management, be more sustainable yeah. and environmentally friendly, right. and give the access to what people are looking for in those spaces. Okay. In I this, wonder though, can I ask? Sure. You said specifically bikes. What about this is better for bikes? Like, are there, do we like put bike racks in there? Like, are there, you know, like, it doesn't seem like that was taken into It was intended to be a superior amenity. If you go to Hans, let's just focus, let's focus, let's just focus on Hans, which you're going to give up. No. Hans is a mess. I mean, it, it has natural, great natural beauty, but a terrible physical environment. Terrible. And, and we could do a lot more with that. What we have is an outfall, right? Which you could do a lot more with that. And it wasn't going to be expensive. And, and I think the other piece of it is, and this is, I'm going to tell you, you're going to, you're going to hear this from me endlessly here. People think that Fairhaven should be a national park. But, I don't agree with that. No, but in the sense that some people think the most important thing is to preserve the whatever, the natural environment. Uh, I think one of the most important things is livable, walkable community. Mm -hmm. Like bike and walk to school. Mm -hmm. I would be happy to put in paving and deal with some more stormwater runoff. If it improved my bike, yeah, it's but, cool. But all that because because <laughs> it, you know every kid you get biking and walking to school is a major carbon footprint. So we, I guess, yeah. we're, but what we're worried. But why does it have to but be? What, what, the what, it about not, this project would, would would say I'm not going to drive there because they did this. I'm going to take my bike. I don't see any any correlation between the two. Is was there Bill parking on a branch? That was part of the discussion. No, we had Bill parking on a branch. We had, but we had a discussion about it because. Again, what does this change in terms of you saying, I got to drive there now? You're no, nothing. In, in, in his defense, I don't think he ever said 
make sure we have a set of stairs so we can get people down the bulkhead. Like their idea in the beginning was very elegant and yeah. simple. Right. And, and they turned it into this. And it of course. So where we are now is with this governing body, they're trying to preserve a grant, rebuild the bulkhead, you know, with drawings that are flawed. My so recommendation really as well as cons yeah. our recommendation, and we still stand by it, or I do. Fix the bulkhead that needs to be done. That's not a want. The rest of it is a want. Go yeah. back to the drawing board, make yeah. it more. It's a don't want, actually. It's, it's a don't want. want. <laughs> we want to have it more of a natural. Long time. More of a natural problem. The real problem you're going to have is my wife is before me. Because my wife has been waiting for this for a very long time. And I got yelled at a lot. Of what about it? Only your wife wants that my wife can incorporate in a greater state. No, and you, you, you're right. But I'm telling you, you have an idea. You give it to your engineering team. Right. This is not a thing. Stay on. Yeah. Right. You're not paid to do this work. You hire a design team. Now, we have in house engineering and we have a contract engineering. Mm -hmm. Part of it was. The reason they did contract engineering was it required special permitting. And the other side of the house was that our own in house engineering team was busy. Therefore, the engineering costs, I'm going to tell you, we should be writing off because those were other things we did, like tennis sports and such that we did in house. So, whatever that was, we were hoping to hire a professional who knew their job. And you're not happy with their business, that they didn't yeah. produce for you what you would have hoped as a planner. Correct. Well, I. I, I... I, I think it's a disconnect between what's drawn and the local fair even value set. You know, there's an easy way to bridge that, right. um, but that process never happened. Yep. So, is there a way to? Again, it goes. They don't want to do some drawing, though. So, like, is there in any world a way to come up with a new set of plans while keeping the two hundred fifty thousand? Is there any world that that can happen? The two hundred fifty thousand is moot at this point because, as I said earlier, if we did it in a more feasible way, because you're 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 commingling batten and grains, that we could do batten a lot cheaper to get it back to being safe and usable as a small craft. But if you add hands back right. in, doesn't that then forget about hands? So hands. No, but I think for the money was you had to have a specific amount also spent other ways, right? It's a it's yeah. a reimbursement. It's a it's a it's a matching grant. No. Or it's a reimbursement right. of 250. But you're so gonna say to spend five. you're gonna spend the same five either way. On grains alone it's five. It's it's the a bucket alone's four hundred. Right. The bulkhead is three eighty nine. Well, four hundred. So, but but the bulkhead <laughs> isn't just a bulkhead. It's a bulkhead with a platform, a drainage system, as well as gaving. That you those things are now all connected. Right. So, so it's not just a bulkhead. As I showed less. to Mr. Mayor this morning, the bulkhead can be constructed with a platform on top of it. If you look at bulkheads, you'll see there's a distance between. Yeah, your whaler and the back of the bulkhead, all right, which is let's call it 18 inches, whatever it is. You can extend that a little bit so you can still have a walkway mm -hmm. this wide, right, or a little bit wider and put up a rail, right? And you can do that in and of itself, and it doesn't cost, it doesn't increase the cost that much. And then that would suffice to walk. Now, could we terrace it with natural terrace to get to that? Probably. Well, and then the ADA, the ADA comes in. Well, so. But you're never going to have ADA going down to that level. There's no yeah. one ADA that is on top. That's like right here. Right? It wouldn't be about halfway down. Well, right. so it wouldn't. So that's the way this is. Yeah, right. right. So you don't have, you're not going to make a wheelchair ADA to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. They're yeah. not going to get back up. Yeah, but, but then, you know, why the stairs need to be it's concrete? Too it's too steep. It's too steep. The grade is too steep. Something. And so then there is a happy medium. Which yeah, I, think, I guess he's saying like, I guess he's saying like I know. no, I know, I, I understand how you can re-engineer. You don't, and you don't have to put stairs. You can make a, a winding pathway out of glory dust. But I think again, I think if we're going to say we're going to pitch this thing under the bus over the concrete pavers, I'm going to say to you, uh, it's not that much area that's actually paved in this scenario because you still have a bunch of area that's not paved. Oh. Okay, wait a second. Let me finish. And then the yeah. other piece of it is you got a maintenance issue, which is concrete pavers are going to be very durable and last us a long time. 
Now, again, I'm not saying I love concrete pavers. I'm just saying in this solution, there's some advantages to it. Are you looking at grains? Pardon? Are you looking, looking at grains? We're only talking about grains, right? So, uh, but that grass, you know, has been there for ever. Yeah. And no babies. Well, it requires a bit of mowing, but I mean, the flip side of it is, I'm just saying, I have no, I have no real objection to it, but I didn't design this because well, I paid a professional to do it. Original question, like, what you would, what would you and your wife want when you consider? My wife wants to go down there after her morning walk, and she wants to enjoy her view shed in a way that she's safe. She doesn't slide down the hill. <laughs> She's not sliding down the hill. She's not getting herself muddy and dirty, and she's enjoying that environment in a quiet and passive way. That's what we're going for. That's what we're going for. Now, so, you can, so, like I said, this is not to my eyes, not that intense, really, compared to other things. Passive. It's not compared to the tennis courts. And it's not very passive, though. So does she be, like, when she goes there on her walk, and I'm not, I'm not singling out your wife, I'm just, no, I think there are a lot of users like your wife, I I think that uh, Michael's experience that she uses that is very similar to what your wife is talking about. I know when I go down there, yeah. so it's the same thing in mind. It's a very contemplative kind Correct. of passive environment. So does she imagine, did she always want to get down to the Vulcan? I think again, I think one of the things, yeah, you want to scary, like oh, right bit. now. Look, you're lucky no one's been hurt, <laughs> right? Sad. Because you have a bulkhead without a railing or anything. And I've been sitting there as they've been deferring this going, you really should deal with this. You really should deal with this and talk to my council members at length to say, you really should deal with this. But just they got the lax wall up or the one around the lax wall still. They did the tennis course, they did the lax wall, you know, I mean, all these things. I'm sitting there going, Recreation. this bulkhead's not good. Yeah, they replaced it. But but uh, like, just to clarify, so did you guys always want to walk down to the ball pit? I, I think again, I think it's always something people have done, right? They've always wanted to. So again, do, is it something that you and your wife would, would rather uh, would do on a consistent basis, and therefore make some sort of um, provision for it? Provision for it oh, because yeah. there's more of, okay. there's more people that move the further there. you go from the river the less, I would argue, the immersive experience. So obviously getting closer to the river, closer to the wall is better than being, you know, half a block back, right? So mm -hmm. what you're saying is now, I get a, now I'm going to, if you stand back on the fringe, you're going to get a tunnel view of the river, correct? You get down there, you're going to get a much more expansive view. I don't think you will because uh, just the way it's, you know, it's because you're not jammed in a corner. Yeah. We can go look at it. You are closer to water, but you, uh, I think, I, I, from, from what I've experienced, you don't have the, I think the better view is up on the bottom. Yeah. That's just my experience. So this discussion is a lot like the kind of community engagement you do before anything gets drawn. Yeah. And you but, unpack it, you have super conversations, you have brilliant ideas, and you, you know, it's messy and awesome. Um, but it, 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 the trained professional knows how to turn that into this is what they're is the toothpaste already out of the tube, yeah. and this is all moved anyway. Yes. So you might as well. Where are you? I don't know what to tell you. I know. I wish I had something. Um, I like planning board. We don't have <laughs> new business. Um, I did mention that I knew Brian Olson wasn't going to be here, and I was supposed to let you know that he sent his regards for the next. Meeting. Thank you, Brian. Um, I wonder um, if Brian would be interested in. Getting a planning board assessment, um, it's really late, but the planning board, they're the guardians of the master plan. They should have a, there should be a commentary or a 100%. Tracy, on this planning board on, on these plans. Okay. On this point, though, yes, is have we as a group looked at the master plan recently and thought about it? Because to be honest with you, this is all water under the bridge the for me because the master plan calls out that improved public access to the waterfront is part of our master plan. Uh, we want to go change that. No, I'm, nobody's you know. asking to change right. that. So nobody's so asking to change I think that they, people are just asking to make it more, more along the lines of being stewards of our environment. Hold on. That's it. Then I would argue that we should probably think about reading that section over and talk about what we think is appropriate. It's a good idea. Good idea. I mean, Hans is technically still in the pipeline, so. Um, and to whatever I don't know what's going to happen on grades because there's a few more steps to take, but um, it's a very good idea to check in with the master plan. Right. 
And you guys are going to hear me say, I think we need a full update, not mm -hmm. a re examination report. Right. I, I still five years out. I always took you very seriously. And exactly. a lot of people don't, but I think the master plan is the way that it's planning right. board and boards like us communicate right. to the council. That's right. and, and, and then it is the council's job to try and execute. Correct. And and it's not my job to figure out the master plan, but when you're there, you're supposed to. No, to we should revise it. Right. Let's yeah. get up to uh, Councilwoman Cole's point. Uh, do we have any new business? Uh, wait, I have one more thing. Yes, I guess oh, we can do other new business if you want. Sure. Um, during the recent engineering and DPW meeting, this idea we were talking about stormwater, just you know, it's a huge issue, um, and leaf and brush. The nexus, of course, is at the, the catchments and the storm drains, and the discussion kind of uh, didn't was not linear. But one of the things that came out of it is should the folks on river be bagging leaves or be, I think a lot of people would like to bag their leaves is kind of where the discussion went. Sure. And, and is why don't they, how can they, is it not allowed? Should they? And I was it, tasked to bring to you guys this question. Right. So um, from that standpoint, the problem always has been is that where we get rid of the leaves in the fields of cold snack, they don't want the bags in their fields. So it's always been a an issue from that standpoint because they're just bulk dumped in the fields and then the farmers. No, because they're dumped yeah, they're, in they're out, of the, out of the back of the truck. Mm -hmm. Tracy, is the question um, the access or is it the runoff issue? So here, well, here's the second part of that is that the Stormax netting was filled, uh, uh, yeah. filled, and may have contributed to okay. some of the flooding that we. It did. That's certainly my first thought. Look, it was been my thought all along when we when I passed those emails the other day, and you know what happened there. So I think the, the question for the environmental commission had to do with um, would this body consider that? Obviously, the, the the state of storm drains is a concern because it impacts the health of the river, and we're all mindful of that. But a lot of what goes in, in the street for pickup. So but that's any town, right? No, there's two there's two parts to that. So um the leaves need to be picked up on a more consistent basis. It's always been a bone of contention for the town. Uh I know Rumson does it by uh monitoring the streets, and when there's a whole bunch of leaves, they they pick them up. I know that with Fairhaven, it's done on certain days and in, in certain times of the year. But people don't, and that you're not supposed to put them out, you know, more than a week in advance. People do because they do their leaves, right? If I'm free on a Sunday and it's not for two more weeks and I'm gone for the following two Sundays, then we got to do what they got to do. But they really have to. I mean, but so it's 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 more of a DPW issue, I think. Well, I, from I, that I, standpoint, the second part of that is that the new street sweeper, we were always told that we were gonna clean out our storm drains on a more consistent basis. I don't know if there's a schedule. I've asked yeah, this before. It's statute. And I don't know, no, only for, I know the county does it. I don't know. We have to do Do we have a record of what's been done when? And I'd like to see it. I don't, I, I can't vouch for it, but there is a record. There is a, is it regular? I've never seen it. Like, by the end of the year, all the, they have to have cleaned out once. See, but well, that, like, so on Rivers Road, so I know that we're Monmouth County, so that's a different story, but those, they haven't been cleaned out except for when we call them. Chase, sure. so can I say, right. I've always advocated that we pick up leaves on River Road because it's a question of traffic safety. Exactly. It's a trap question yeah. of the stormwater issue. Um, I would recommend that we pick up on River Road well, when we're doing leaves. Yeah. Every day we do leaves. We pick up on River Road, Third Street, Hans, and Ferry River. More than about Grange and Hans. And, and, and Grange. Not as much. Grange isn't so bad because we have a bluff there. No, no, but I, the reason for that is because <laughs> those are key access points for kids biking to school, mm -hmm. and the kids swerve out around the piles. And then it's all, if we have to add something for stormwater, fine. I mean, we're talking stormwater. But here, those, right? four, those four roads 100%. would improve our access. And yes. I always had a problem with DPW saying, well, people will complain they're getting more service. I'm like, that's because they're on a major corridor and they got to, you know, suck it up with all the traffic. I don't even think people. But, but I think that that's one way to deal with it is to pick up more frequently. Yes. And those corridors we identify as important. To my point with Rumsfeld, 
Right, but the, but the problem has always been getting your management staff to understand that this is a go goal and objective. I would just say that's I the point that it's I gonna, you know what I mean? Because if yep. you just swept, because again, okay, so well, we said it. maybe there's going to be five piles of leaves on River Road. All right, so go down River Road, pick up the five piles, and send the street, and then, street move on, and then move to the next where you well, said it's street street for which Teresa said over and over that the protocol was pick up street sweepers. Right. I've not yet to see a street sweeper come soon thereafter to pick up. But, but with but regard to third, I guess they're working on it. Again, that's also back to kids' access to some uh -huh. bike and bike. Absolutely. And, and so, again, I don't know why it's always been a problem, but my engineering staff is not, I don't know, maybe they have a hearing problem. I don't understand, but never could get them to do it. That's the way we. That's the way. Oh, I was brutal with, with water. That was, that was the way that we've always suggested. Okay. To the APW to handle the leaf. Because you can't bag them um, because we can't get rid of them. So, yeah. what about some prescribed bag that is. Got to ask the, the, the end. The end yeah. Well, so much volume. The what? farmers. Okay. Um, I don't know if they want. I, I bags, you know, it it may may work. Uh, you have to ask. It's not a question for us. I we probably don't have a problem with it. It's it's the end user of the leaves, which is the farmer. But Brian, if you give them more frequent pickup, wouldn't that solve the problem? Hundred percent. I so well, I think that the, you're right about the frequency of the pickup. Just the idea is to get them out of the bike lane and to get them off the street so that they can't so be they don't go into the train. Right. Yeah. Correct. And um, and. Again, it's just a mission critical thing. And if they're going to sweep these three streets or four streets every day, every day they're doing leaves. Why can't they do those roads? They should. So this, should. this the sequence is I've been told is that the brush leaves the streets sweep. It, yeah. You know, whether well, mm -hmm. brush, right. but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, because it, and it, street a leaf pile. Just and got it, it. What's that? I'm sorry. I think it was last year. We just got the streets. Yeah. Because once you pile leaves, they tend to stay together unless mm -hmm. somebody drives through them and spreads them out. Yeah. But it's the leaves that are left behind yeah. that we were upset. Well, we own a street sweeper now. We're going to come and, and and get those. Those are the ones that are being washed into the storm basins. I don't think once, like I said, what you know, it's funny how the leaves act, right? You can you can break them around and they're piled, and the wind really won't affect them much. The water won't affect them much because they're they're pushed together. Once you get them spread out, or or you know, there's whatever left well, I'll, behind. I'll I'll bring help. this back and and uh, the frequency would help. And is there a way to make a recommendation that they do clean out the storm gutters more? Even though I know that you're saying there's a set schedule they have to do. Uh, I would like to see the set schedule because I you just yes. know, and also because hands a lot of that water is coming straight down hands and it's not getting in the drain, so it's still coming straight down the river and then turning right. So we can yeah, it's very <laughs> Can we? Um, you guys can ask for that. Yeah, can, can ask. Christy, can, can we ask? Um, yeah, can we ask Nick? For the schedule and what's been done and what's scheduled to be done, please, be with the stormwater. Um, I think see it. I just, I've never seen big changes. I'm expecting, or I have been I asked and I was told that was going to happen. Um, this topic of stormwater management is going to be on the next council agenda. To be on every. As I heard too. Yeah. yeah. Which um, is a very big subject. So it's yeah. not like we'll get through it's all of it. Huge. It's huge. Yeah, we have to address it. I mean, it's it's huge. It's huge, it's huge it. from all aspects. Imagine being in Fort Lauderdale. I mean, we saw friend, nothing. Well, my friend was pumping out her basement though for two days after, but coming from my yard. Right. The so yeah. Yeah. What, what's the focus of this? I'm sorry, I'm just trying to catch the fun. The stormwater management. And what's the we should I think I'm we should do items. But I it'll be the first time that, for example, our stormwater administrator Nick, who's yeah. now had a new wave of education and he has a new scope of responsibilities, he'll be in attendance to take us through that. So in my mind, I'm looking for um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at several things. Um I don't know what the focus will be because I think for the council, it'll be kind of the first time you're going to be taking through this. Yeah. And there's no right. So yeah. it'll be a learning moment. And I, I don't know what will come from it, but 
Really well, again, I mean, I think it was trying to direct the best practices, but I'm just sometimes I find New Jersey a little Byzantine. <laughs> As I said, I'm teaching sustainability now, so I'm reading all the oh, stuff from you? across the country, and I'm like, really? Yeah. Can we just do it this way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, we waste a lot of money on regulations as opposed yeah. to infrastructure. Yep. Yeah. I couldn't go with that. Yeah. Can you come to the meeting? Uh, which one is that? The 22nd. Is that a council meeting? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll have to break my rule. Yeah, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure that he has a rule against life. You guys fall out handsome. Um, he's talking about me. He makes me look like a Yeah, yeah. Do we have any? Yeah, I don't know. Any other new business? Any other new business? Yeah, yeah. Do we have any other new business? Um, I don't have anything. I had no, no. I think we um. Uh, no. Yeah, right. No. Gary, Kelly, any more new business? Nope, not that I can think of. All right, so um, down to 10. Public comment, the Fairhaven Environmental Commission welcomes comments, suggestions, and inquiries from resident, residents of Fairhaven. You must wait to be recognized by the chair, identify yourself by name and address for the record, and please limit your comments to three minutes. We That's a, yeah, well. <laughs> What's that? Uh, yeah. Bonnie. Uh, on Torsivia, 115 Baton Road. Um, so, in, John, it's so interesting hearing the history about this. I mean, it really, I never really, uh, it's fascinating listening to it. I, mean, I didn't realize that you were so involved in this whole thing. So, I, I don't, I told the Pat Council for years, I don't do ball sports. They would talk to me about volleyball and softball. And as I said, I'm a, I'm a waterfront guy. I'm like, yeah. Ryan, I grew up on the waterfront. I grew up on a river fishing, sailing. So this is very close to my heart. Well, so, I mean, when this whole thing was done, and, and it sounds like you just said you hired a professional and they gave you a plan and you thought, okay, cool, that's a good plan because that's what they do. Yeah. And, and now, if, if we could just, I mean, I was thinking about when I did my bulkhead, mm -hmm. I did put a boardwalk across the top and mm -hmm. and I have a nice wooden walkway down to it. Right. And I thought I mean I never really thought about mine compared to Granger that you could do something like right. that. But could we not maybe think about just suggesting that as a stalker? I mean yeah right. I think that you and your wife should get be able to get down there. I've walked down that hill and yeah it's, it's not easy. Um and if it's not possible to fix Grange at least be very involved in hands mm -hmm. and be sure that that walkway going past Ralph and the brand new big house is done so that the water is trapped and it's a, it's a beautiful entrance it's not paved mm -hmm. and then figure out a way to get rid of that slab of and mm -hmm. it's so awful I mean it, it's really dangerous when my dog is trying to get down yeah, the beach, it's horrible um, and again, it's a nice piece of an amenity that we couldn't yeah, develop it, it with minimal. Yeah. But it, it should be done if you're studying sustainability, then find the way that somebody, an environmental designer, that can do that for us. You know, okay. Okay. You guess, again, you know, you look at when you hire a contractor for a project like this, yeah. you had expectations. But again, part of it is the different discussions, as you saw us talking about how. We view different things. I'm a big bike and walk person. I'm a big trans. We would have a bus stop, by the way, in front of Fairhaven Hardware mm -hmm. if it was me. But the council overturned me back in whatever 2006. There's a bus stop. No, I was going to have a bus pull out, so uh, I wouldn't have uh, a disruption of traffic. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that was thrown out. Now that to me was very irresponsible because to me bus service is an important part of a sustainable community. Sure, but. We don't have any bus stop signs in this town. So I look at things a little differently. It's not that I'm not a, I'm not a green. I am a green. It's just I focus a lot on livability just because if everybody moves out into, you know, far suburbia, Huntington County, that's not good for the environment. It's better if we can be walking, biking, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're lucky. We still have a grocery store, right? Mm -hmm. You can yell about the acne all you want, but these things, <laughs> yeah, a liquor store, a post office. These are all the things that people across the country when we talk about sustainability. We have a drive through post office. No, we'll talk about walkability. So I tend to focus on that. And I, I, I don't disagree with my colleagues here. I, I just think that 
I'd like to see it happen before something else happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just think that, that, you know, every year everybody's learning more about stormwater and the, you know, mm -hmm. the sustainable, and, and maybe that wasn't incorporated back then. I hope they will be. We will get the right designer to do that. Yeah, I think that's, the future that's, that's, that just go out to an engineer. Yeah. Yeah, this is the first. That's thing. yeah. Okay, that's, and that's right about my point. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Okay. Thank you, Bonnie. So he gets I have to talk to my wife. Oh God. I was gonna say about the leaves. If you just get some of those leaves to stay in the yard, yeah, be yeah. put in the beds, there'd be less leaves on the street. Right? <laughs> Bonnie, I can tell you this right now. I don't know if Fairhaven can eliminate leaf pickup will have no impact on me. Not a leaf leaves my yard. You what? Not a leaf leaves my yard. I have two. I mow them and compost them all on my leaves. So you could cancel it tomorrow. I would care less because I just don't think I don't like the fact that we burn diesel yeah. to move, leaf, move leaves, leaves to pulse stick right. to then bring back. So why are you so quiet? About what? About that. I was the defender of the tree ordinance for 15 years, and I was relieved of duty in 2019. So it's just one of those things, you know. When you try to say I'm going to eliminate parking loops. Yeah. You're going to eliminate leaf pickup. I mean, these are things if I would really, you're really going to let me go. You know, <laughs> if you're really going to let me go, I would eliminate all parking. I wouldn't require any parking. I would just say, figure it out. That's yeah. that's the modern way. He means for the commercial. Anyway, right. for the visibility. Right. Yeah. You, you mandate so much parking. And you don't worry you about you get, How you get in those streets? You get asphalt. You, you, get, right. you get. But if you try and say that, Bond, in this world, in, yeah. in, we did. But, but we had to get a very edge. It's changing. I don't right. agree. It's good. Uh, I was over here yeah, a long time. You were ahead of a lot. I, I proposed accessory dwelling yeah. units in this town in 2005. Do we have we have some Andres? That's yeah. They shot it down like you wouldn't believe. So I, I, I try. I think I think he is. It's a little ahead of them. But ahead of a lot of people. I, I try, but I'll try. I'll keep trying. Do you want to eliminate? Good. All right. I'm not going to eliminate anything right Thank now. Okay. Other than uh, there's two more hands raised. Please. Take a minute and acknowledge. I just. I just thought that you would call to the environmental commission meetings and you sit in the <laughs> discussion <laughs> and then you share for three minutes. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I would put a lot of pressure on it because there's no time left. And you're like, okay, are you going to ask a question? Oh, I'm hungry. No, no, no. Yeah. Are you willing to go that again? Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Bonds. I think her. And she yeah. has, we have two more comments. I, I appreciate that. Susan uh, O'Brien, you are. Hi, Susan. Good evening. I almost came into the meeting because I wanted to um, tell you a couple of things. Um, many years ago, when Mike Pilecchio was borough administrator, there was a resolution put in place where those of us on River Road may bag our leaves. What DPW does when they pick up the bags, they rip them open and dump the leaves but it does prevent the leaves from blowing up the street. My leaves tend not to stay in one place. My neighbors better, get them. You better train them better, Ed Susan. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so that, that resolution is already in place where you can bag, but DPW will rip, rip them open when they are collecting leaves and they'll leave you the bags too. <laughs> Thank you, oh, Susan. Let's see. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Um, the other wait. thing is that um, I believe the grant for Grange, Hans, and the um, boat ramp uh, was contingent upon water access, which I believe is why right. they had to do stairs down from Grange. Mm -hmm. Although I can't imagine how somebody in a wheelchair would do this. It's not going to give them water. We have, what we have to do is get the definition of what the grant is meaning by water access. In this case, you're never going to have water access at Grange unless you have an elevator. Bringing exactly. Up down the water, right? 14 exactly. Feet. However, that was one of the conditions of um, applying for the grant. Unfortunately, I think what we should have done many years ago before this bulk had failed was to fix it. Yep. Yes. It was, yes it was deferred. That is As was most things in town. That was my initial. That's that was my initial, but I almost got popped in the face by Jonathan. So I, I well, I can I say it. I didn't have a I, I didn't get a too. 
I have, but I did get fired. Um, thank you. Um, Susan, thank you very much. Um, okay. Good points. Thank you. Great points. I appreciate it. Always. Hi, um, Sarah Schiavetti, 27 Cooney Terrace. Um, I wanted to repeat the thanks for us green team members who got to go to Sustainable Jersey Conference on Friday. Lots of wonderful things to learn. Um, I heard you talking earlier about mapping projects. Um, they had some fascinating uh, presentations about mapping there. Um, they also directed us to a lot of resources that already exist for mapping in the state of New Jersey, which I can send to Christy to share with the rest of you. Um, they have heat maps, they have water maps, they have energy utility maps, et cetera. So if that can bring any value back from our registration payments, um, I hope that cool. can help. Great. I yeah. have utilities. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Quite useful. Thank you, Sarah. Any other Any comments? comments? I, mean, I have lots of comments, but I think I don't want to put it over Thank again. So, um, but I will say I agree. I'm on the side of greener parks. I don't understand why greener infrastructure at the parks has anything to do with transportation or access. They can be enjoyed beautifully and naturally in a way that um, I don't think would compromise any safety or accessibility issues. So, done. Agreed. Thank you, Sarah. Um, any other Sarah, comments or questions? Motion to adjourn. So moved. I'd just like to note that the next meeting, June 4th, is yes. moving up the time to 7 o'clock instead of 7.30. So right. the woman from the DEP will be directly following. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and I thought it was June 4th, advantageous to have her here. And I threw out a, a copy of those. Did they a, uh, I threw out to her to, that we would have it earlier to accommodate her to get her home at a, at a normal yeah. hour. No worries. Okay. Thank you. I've seen it a thousand times. Thank you. Basically, I got your map ready. I'll send it to you as a.